Hi, and this video is going to be a follow-up to a video where I talked about a single player controlling several player characters, that is, three or four player characters. But this time I am going to talk about hirelings, henchmen, sidekicks, because I consider that things should be handled a bit differently. When it comes to hirelings, henchmen and sidekicks, they are not as important. It sounds a bit awful, but they are not as important when compared to the player characters. You have seen this in many different situations. When it comes to movies, comic books, anime, etc., you have characters that are certainly not as capable as the main, uh, the protagonists of the story. So, when it comes to hirelings, if you were to put too much emphasis upon them, I think you would lose the focus of the session. The session is all about the adventures of the player characters. They are significantly different from the other characters in the world. There are some systems that give them mechanical advantages, but if we were to look at them from a thematic angle, they are always the, the focus. They are always in the thick of it. Whatever the conflict, the situation may be, they are at the center. Or even if they are at the perimeter, they are moving towards the center of that conflict. So they are extremely important. If they disappear from the adventure, from the scenario, etc., depending on, on the game that you're playing, things could go quite bad. The evil forces could triumph. The problem may never have a solution. It's all about that. But if you take away the hirelings, the henchmen, sometimes the sidekicks, almost nothing changes. Almost. And yet, those hirelings, those henchmen, those sidekicks, they support the player characters. So how can you roleplay that? There is a certain... a potential problem. If you are going to be roleplaying the non-player characters, that is the hirelings, the henchmen, the sidekicks, like I said, it takes away the it takes the spotlight away from the player characters, from the protagonists, from the real protagonists. And because they are hired help, so to speak, and like I said, putting it putting it in very derogatory terms concerning the mechanics and the theme, they are not as fascinating, they are not as proactive, they are not as, as important for the overall plot and for the story itself for the many plot hooks, etc. Yes, this, this video could sound a bit... Well, the only people that actually become bothered by this is those that are those that identify with the hirelings, right? But Alexander the Great, he said something like, I do not fear an army of lions led by a ship. I, feel, I fear an army of, of ship led by a lion. So the lions, the player characters are the lions and the hirelings are the ship. Like I said, it's like, it sounds a bit horrible, but that's the way things are in fiction and sometimes in real life. So I would recommend that when you are role-playing the hirelings, you handle them in a more subtle, almost muted way, almost muted. Like in the case of a perfect example in my Dark and Terrible campaign, Crispy and Josh, they describe their action, the actions of the hirelings in a very subtle way. They do not roleplay the hirelings, I don't roleplay the hirelings, and yet they are describing the actions of their hirelings. They are giving orders, commands, rather, because they are not player characters. They are usually assigning tasks, they are giving orders to their hirelings, and the hirelings carry out those tasks. If you saw the recent part of the Dark and Terrible campaign, part 4, you see that there are dire consequences for in those instances. But that's the difficult uh, journey of the hireling, of the henchman, of the henchman, of the sidekick. The heroes are going to be leading but because of the tradition of having those cannon, cannon fodder in all sorts of dangerous adventures, they are there to take the hits for the player characters, for the 
main characters. When it comes to the Dungeon Master, I would recommend against role-playing the hirelings, the henchmen, the psychics, because there, there is this certain tendency among players where they start to rely upon their hirelings, their henchmen, for advice, for all sorts of situations. They use them as some sort of mouthpiece for the game master to lend them a hand. And it shouldn't be that because the dungeon master, game master, does not exist in the game world. So it gets quite ridiculous. I have seen many instances when the players are like, um, hireling number one, what do you think we should do? And they start to fight. In uh, Yes, they, they have a combat encounter and they're like asking the hirelings, the henchmen, the sidekicks to come up with their own strategies and tactics. Maybe as a game master, maybe rarely on the rare occasion, you could share some important bits of information through the hirelings if it is absolutely necessary and do it sparsely. Almost never, I would recommend. But yes, there is that risk of the players using the hirelings to obtain vital clues and pretty much obtaining any information concerning strategies, tactics, etc. A good idea if you want to handle a certain AI system, it would be like purchasing one of those books like the Flextail AI Guidebook. The Flextail Solo AI Guidebook, I think that's the name. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. You have all sorts of tables to make some quick rolls. You could print the sections that you want, or if you have the physical book, have it open in the relevant sections and make those rolls to determine what the hirelings are going to do during battle or whatever. There are other role-playing games with subsystems of combat and whatnot uh, on a certain uh, artificial intelligence procedure. And when it comes to the bookkeeping of the hirelings, etc., there, there are some very simple systems like Quick and Classic of my Dark and Terrible campaign. Hirelings are handled in such a simple way. They are only there to take blows for the players and to help them carry stuff. We tweak things so that they can perform simple tasks, not very complex tasks, but they are still very useful. You have seen how Crispy and Josh have used this quite masterfully to further progress through the adventure. But in more complex systems, yes, you may have to do some bookkeeping every now and then. That is inevitable. But as long as you roleplay things and you roleplay the, the actions of the hirelings in a very subtle way, you know, like, uh, Bob, go and bring me that, or Joe, stay here and keep watch. Yell if someone comes. And th that's perfect. And you don't have to spend so much time coming up with the personalities for each of the hirelings, speaking as they speak, giving out their opinions, etc. They are pretty much, in most cases, useful wallpaper. It sounds harsh, but that is oftentimes the case. Now, Hi, I was going to tell you something. I think it was very important about hirelings. Role-playing them in a subtle way. Ah, yes, sidekicks. Sidekicks are a bit more important because they are almost ready to become uh, fully-fledged full, fully fledged heroes. If you really want to put importance on hirelings, even familiars, there are role-playing games that allow you to create such characters. Many superhero games that allow you to play as sidekicks, as a player character that supports the hero. If you're okay with that style, you should, you should have one player going for it. It's a cool experience. And if you like those tropes, the sidekick trope, the player is going to be comfortable with that. He's not going to be feeling like, Oh, I'm, I am constantly out of the spotlight because the hero does all of the important things, but the sidekick is there to support the hero and to learn from the hero. And there is this supplement by, well, Barrel Rider Games was a separate company, but now it has joined with, how, how what's the name of this, this company? Monday Night Games? Something about the night? Well, they have this supplement for Labyrinth Lord and they allow you to play as, as a familiar. You can even roleplay as a familiar. If you wanted to roleplay as the cat 
or the bat or whatever of the wizard, you can also have a familiar player character. And so when it comes to sidekicks, perhaps maybe you want to actually roleplay their personalities. I would recommend that you handle them just like hirelings. And if you want to put more emphasis, control them as player characters with those special rules. But yes, in most cases, hirelings are going to be like the red shirts, like in Star Trek. They are there to make the heroes look awesome, look good. They are there, there to be useful and suffer usually horrifying deaths and casualties. That's the life of the hireling. I am sorry to say it, that's why you pay them. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was informative and entertaining. Let me know your own thoughts on hirelings, henchmen, sidekicks and whatnot. As always, thank you for watching my videos. Uh, thank you for to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.